Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me again. Here's our ninth video in our series, um, you know, Components, Constraints, and Tags. Of course, the tags comes uh, schedules. And we're at the very end of our schedule thing, or our schedule component of that series. And what we're going to be doing is comparing our two schedules we put together and talk about those a little bit. And then, and then uh, insert those into our sheet. So we have a sheet template that's all ready to go. And I'll show you how to insert those schedules in, in, into the sheet. It's very similar to how we inserted our schedule into our room schedule into our sheet. And uh, you may have a section of your sheet set aside strictly for schedules like this. So, our door schedule, you know, it's okay. I kind of like the furniture schedule better if we go back to that. When I think about the furniture schedule, it does have costs associated with it. I think I probably would like to have that with our door schedule too. So, it's, you know, it's, uh, I think it's an appropriate field to have. And um, let's go ahead and add it. So, remember how we do this? If we go up to our properties manager, we have those uh, five tabs that are on that dialog box. They're all associated over here, so you can quickly access them. We're going to go to the Fields button, and we're going to just scroll down. No, we don't need to scroll down, but we're going to select Costs and go to Add. And it's going to automatically put it at the very bottom of our schedule list, our schedule field list. And that's about all we need to do. We just go to OK. And that puts a, an element in here. And we're just going to assign some numbers to this. So right now, the numbers are just going to be a guesstimate. In order for these, if you're really putting together a project like this, uh, you really want to have some really good information. No sense putting in information that really can't be used. It just kind of gets in the way. So you want to be very, fairly accurate uh, with this. But uh, for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to put in a ballpark number. So a single flush door, maybe about $230. And it's going to apply those all those doors, which if we go over here to our type mark, all the uh, door, the type door number one is going to get that $230. So our double uh, flush, double acting door, or double door that uh, swings both back and forth. It allows access between our fabrication area and our hallway. We're going to make that, um, you know, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe $600. It's going to apply that to all the doors, which we only have one. Overhead rolling door, kind of a pricey item, $2,300. It's going to fill in both for that. And maybe for our front door, our curtain wall front door, uh, maybe $1,800. It might be a little cheap, but we have costs here. And uh, pretty much the biggest difference between these two, our floor schedule, our furniture schedule, and our door schedule, is that the furniture, uh, in regard to the, the door schedule, it's uh, kind of a, it's um, grouped by the mark. Uh, in regard to the mark, uh, if you remember, uh, mark is just like a room number in a way. It's like a door number. Every door gets a very specific number. Whereas with a furniture schedule, in regard to the different furniture elements, all the chairs of the same type and manufacturer model number are going to uh, get the same number. So that's a big difference. The door schedule does have that type mark too. So know that. That's a test question. Mark, the difference between mark and type mark. That's a test question, so I'll know those uh, the difference there as I just explained it. So you better press the rewind button and listen to that one more time. So, in regard to the door schedule, I, I don't like redundancy, and I think it's a really good idea with architectural, engineering, construction dra drawings to get out of the habit of putting in redundant dimensions, redundant information. The problem with redundancy, here's another test question for you. The problem with redundancy is that it leads to ambiguity. There is a time in the old-fashioned days when you uh, had redundant dimensions on a drawing and you change uh, one dimension but forgot to change the other dimension. If a builder is looking at that and looking at that, um, um, you know, that drawing with two different dimensions on it, he's going to say to himself and to you eventually, which one do you want? And that costs money. Sometimes it costs a lot of money. Now, there is a parametric relationships in Revit architecture that uh, if you change the values here, like the type, the width, the height, and one of these columns is going to change it everywhere, but uh, I wouldn't rely on that, and it's always a good idea to get out that extra fluff. So in that respect, what I like to do is take my family and type and move it in front of the description and get rid of type, width, and height, because I think those are kind of superfluous now. So let's go to the fields and tape out, take out uh, type, width, and height. Let's just remove those, take our family and type, Move that up to above description. Oops, went too far. Good, okay. Now that's a much tighter schedule. I kind of like that better. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Let's put these into a sheet. Right click on sheets, like we did with the room schedule. Let's go ahead and load a sheet. Let's go to the folder where your sheets are. I'm going to go to the folder where my sheet templates are. 
I'm in my prep folder, so I have a couple different uh, to choose from. It looks like I have some backup files for a couple of my shoots. The one I really want is this title block D, E, D, and I. Open that up. It's already loaded, and just like in AutoCAD when we're loading line types, we have to ask for it again. And there we go. We have our sheet in place. Uh, if we go down to sheets, so let's uh, give this a specific sheet number. Let's right click on that. Uh, go to rename. It's going to ask us for two fields. Why didn't it give it to me? There it is, rename. We're going to call this sheet 501, maybe our schedule section of our uh, sheet list. It's going to be a name. We're going to call this schedules. Now remember, everything, everything you have control over in uh, Revit Architecture, you want to make sure it's capitalized and spelled correctly, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, once you do that, then our sheet, uh, the parametric relationships in the, in the sheet change. I'm not going to go through all these because it's redundant to the other sheet uh, setup video that I had earlier. But let's go ahead and insert our schedules now. Schedules are under the Schedules Quantities tag, tab in our project browser. Kind of a slow computer, but I'm going to put in my door schedule and my furniture schedule. One thing you'll notice, I'm going to put in my furniture schedule. It's going to try to align it. You can't really use the alignment tool here, but you can rely on that polar tracking in order to get those schedules aligned. Remember, if everything's nice and clean, easy to read, lined up, uh, you're going to have a much better set of drawings here and are going to be much easier to read with less uh, opportunity for mistakes. So let's uh, stretch this out a little bit to make sure that uh, uh, all of our information is on one line. So just a little bit more on that, a little bit more on this one. And description, we're going to make that a little bit more too, so it looks like everything's on a single line. That to me is a lot better looking schedule than it was before. Okay, same thing with our door schedule. Let's stretch it out. Usually I start from the left and work on my way to the right. And I'll stretch that out just a little bit more. Our description, stretch that out so it's in a single line. And our level, we're going to stretch that out so it's all in a single line. So we're almost done here. This needs to be stretched out just a bit. And a little bit more. There we go. You know, I think I'm going to keep that last line with the curtain wall door because its description for its family and type is so long. I'm going to go ahead and keep that the way it is. So there's our schedule sheet. That's how you do it. I think we're pretty much done with this. So thank you for joining me. Please join me for other, uh, easy for me to say, please join me for other videos.